All right, so uh, before we get into this video, whoever Alex is, I got to give a special shout out to you, my friend, because you deserve something special. I don't know if we all got to get together, we got to buy you lunch or something. We got to do something to just be appreciative of the sacrifice that you made for all of us Ravens fans that are sitting back listening uh, when you tried to get that Lamar, that last Lamar question in there, but they weren't having it. And that was... Probably, I know this is about the biggest things that we took away from that Ravens pre-draft Liars luncheon. That was one of the biggest ones right there, that they were not going to have any Lamar Jackson conversations. This was not going to be about Lamar Jackson, and they were not, because if they would have answered one question, then somebody would have asked another one, and somebody would have asked another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and it would have just, it could have turned from a pre-draft Liars luncheon to the Lamar luncheon, and the Ravens, they made sure that they weren't having that, but at the same time, why wouldn't it be about Lamar? Why wouldn't questions about Lamar be asked? Because, I mean, it is kind of your quarterback, and it is kind of a big situation. It is kind of a situation that has an impact on literally every single thing you do. It impacts everything. They talked about the draft. Well, if you trade Lamar, then you would get more draft picks, and you would have to draft a quarterback. Well, you don't have to, but you would figure that they would draft a quarterback. If Lamar stays, that changes how you would draft, how you would move in the draft. Uh, if, if, as far as free agents, that impacts free agency because they're going to be free agents that's looking at the Ravens like, oh, nice team. They usually win a good amount of games. I they can get to the playoffs with them. But um, is Lamar going to be there? Because if he is, teams will look at it one way. And if he's not, then they can look at it a completely different so I know there were a lot of people that were like, oh, well, what do you guys expect? It's a pre-draft luncheon. Why would they be asking questions about Lamar? Well, because Lamar impacts the draft. He literally impacts every single thing that these Baltimore Ravens do. So we'll see how things go. But by the tone, didn't really sound like things are in a great place with Lamar to me. That's, what I, that, that, that's just me personally, though. That, that's what I took away from that. It did not sound like things are in a good place with Lamar Jackson. Of course, uh, a lot of people were anticipating that, oh, man, is, is Lamar going to tweet right when this uh, pre-draft presser goes live? But he didn't. He did like 20 minutes before, and he retweeted that thing about, I don't know if that was a shot at the Ravens or not. I don't know. But um, anyway, for, as far as the pre-draft presser, um, it just one of the biggest things I took away from it was that the Eric DaCosta, he wants more draft picks. He, he wants more draft picks, and he continued to say that at different times throughout the presser. He talked about how they only have five right now, but they would love to have more. And I think that's something that everybody knew before that presser went live, that the, like the Ravens of all teams, because you know how much they love draft picks. They all, sometimes they almost love them too much, but they love draft picks. So, of course, they will want more. You get more draft picks, you got more chances to – take a swing, and, and hopefully hit a home run. Um, but he also did talk about it in another part of the press of how sometimes they felt like that there were times where they may have had a little too many draft picks. And over the years, those draft picks, they start to accumulate and whatnot, and then you almost got to do a purge because you got so many young, talented players, and you can't keep them all. So that can make things tough. Um, but anyway, let's get into some of my notes. Well, the press has started first. Well, from an audience standpoint, uh, the mics weren't even working. Um, but then when Eric DaCosta started talking, he talked about how the board, it'll be set next Friday or Saturday. And then he started off saying he wished they had more picks. And he said the goal is to get more draft picks. The goal is to get more picks. So I was like, OK. Um, first question was, this, it's been a week since Lamar tweeted the trade request. Have you had a chance to talk to him since? And Eric DaCosta said, I understand the need to ask those type of questions, but out of respect for the luncheon, it's about the draft. I think we've spoken about this situation about five different times. We just want to move forward to the draft. So I don't know, like, like I said, to, to me, it, it, it sounds like, and again, this is a liar's luncheon. So hey, maybe he was lying. Maybe he was just putting on. Maybe he was just putting on. But from, that, from his responses, the way that they handled everything about Lamar, especially with our guy Alex, shout out to Alex again. But um, it just sounded like they were done. And they sounded like they, like they were tired. But again, this is Elias luncheon. So, hey, maybe they were just putting on an act. Um, they, did, they, they asked some different questions about the draft and whatnot, upcoming prospects or whatnot. They talked about Joey Porter Jr. at one point. And they kind of joked around. I think it was Jeff Zrebic kind of joked around. Oh, what, how would it be if you guys got Joey Porter Jr., especially with his father having been uh, a stealer? 
and that ooh, that's back when that rivalry was real, man. It ain't the same as it used to be. Um, but it, that that's back when it was real, man. Uh, but it, Harbaugh was like, hey, I, what? Joey Porter will be a he'll be a Ravens fan then. But anyway, um, another thing that we took away from this uh, presser. The que- and I was so glad that somebody asked about this because it doesn't get asked about very often. Obviously, with this whole Lamar thing going on, but Patrick Queen, Patrick Queen in the fifth year option. I was glad that somebody brought that up, and they asked um, about well, like what's the status of it, what's going on with it, and Eric DaCosta again with one of these answers where it's like, Ooh, uh, uh, that don't really look too good to me. But Eric DaCosta said that'll be a discussion we want to have with Patrick. We wouldn't want to announce anything too premature with you guys. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, it, it just doesn't sound too promising. It, it, it is, I mean, really, y'all know, y'all remember, ever since Ravens traded for Roquan Smith, that's when it stopped being promising for me for Patrick Queen because um, it just doesn't look good. Like, they, they are adding a player. Um, they're, adding, they're giving up significant draft capital. They gave up a second-round pick and I think a fifth, two, and a player – to get Roquan Smith, a good player now, um, but he, he's in your position. He plays your position. So if they were satisfied with you, how you play your position, they wouldn't have got him. They wouldn't have got him. I know people are like, oh, well, they play alongside each other, which they do, which is nice. But if they really felt like Patrick Quinn was that dude, why would they trade for Roquan Smith? For what? They wouldn't, in my opinion. So it's just, it, it doesn't, and Patrick Quinn is not a bad player at all, uh, but it just, it doesn't look good in my opinion. Doesn't look good for Patrick Queen at all. So, and then again, last time that they were asked about Patrick Queen's fifth-year option, Eric DaCosta, he went to answer the question. And he didn't even give like a semi-promising answer. Like for Hollywood, and obviously it was a lie, but for Hollywood, he was like, oh yeah, when they asked about his fifth-year option, oh yeah, we anticipate picking up Hollywood's fifth-year option. Okay, hold on, nice, nice, nice. Did they do it? No, they didn't do it. So, with Patrick Queen, it sounds much less promising than that. But again, we got to see. The deadline um, is in May to pick up the uh, fifth-year options. It's in May. I forgot exactly what day is in May, but it's in the first half of May. I can tell you that much. Um, so we'll see. But I would think if, it's a big if, if he is traded, then it will be, I would anticipate that being before the draft. And again, Ravens want more draft picks. Eric DeCosta made that crystal clear. And it's like he was doing a little bit of negotiating at this pre-draft presser. Letting it be known, like, hey, we want more draft picks. Like, hey, teams, make us some offers. You know some of these players, we're not keeping them all. Give us some offers. Now, there was another, somebody asked about uh, the possibility of the Ravens drafting a quarterback and selecting a quarterback even in the first round. And they said that their board it does have some quarterbacks who are, uh, they ranked in the top, excuse me, top 31 of players, I think they said. And, uh, he said it is a possibility. And what I think that was is, it, it, I mean, it is a real possibility. Obviously, it's a, it's a possibility. But I think that's also them trying to potentially, possibly, maybe, it's just me, just my opinion. But I think it could be them trying to sort of send a message to Lamar. Like, hey, um, we, we ready to draft somebody. We, we, we gave you an offer. I don't know if the offer is still on the table now. I don't know. But, hey, we tried to make this thing work, but we ready to move on if we have to. And if we have to, we will. So, I don't know. I don't know. Could it be? Maybe. Maybe not. The world will never know. Well, I mean, Eric DeCosta and them, the people in the Ravens front office world, they know. But will we? Mm, we'll see. But that's what I took it as. Um, and, I mean, a business move. Negotiations. It's happening. So Ravens, their front office, they're going to do what's in their best interest. Lamar Jackson, his camp, they're going to do what's in their best interest. Now, I'm interested in both sides being able to come together, work it out, but we'll see. Like I keep saying, I got my doubts. And if I had to pick right now, I mean, like I've been picking for the past couple of weeks and months or whatever, I don't think it ends well. I don't think, I don't think this, these two sides come together and make it happen and make it work. But, again... I've been wrong about stuff in the past, and I'll be wrong about stuff in the future as well. So, anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Um, this pre-draft liars luncheon. Um, 
this was after after the whole Alex thing. Like after Alex got semi shut down, it, it really changed the trajectory of the entire press conference. Um, and, and really, when, when they came in, and, and they came in pretty much saying, "Hey, this is not gonna be about Lamar today. It's really not." But again, like I said earlier in the video, Lamar Jackson literally impacts everything that you are going to do. His situation is huge, obviously. And, I mean, they knew that there were going to be questions about Lamar Jackson. There's going to be questions about Lamar Jackson every Ravens presser that there is with the situation going on. It's, it's going to happen. They know that. But they were like, you know what? We're going to get control of this thing early. We ain't going to let Lamar Jackson questions take over this thing, and we're we going to handle it. So they did. And our poor guy, Alex, he ended up being the recipient uh, of them handling it. But shout out to him one more time. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like Alex probably was when he asked that Lamar Jackson question, when they where they put him as far as the press room or the conference room, we out.